Allow me to tell you something about yellow jaundice. So yellow jaundice is a color. In other words, a color that is a yellow discoloration of the skin. Almost your child looks a bit like a knick-knack. And we're talking generally about newborn babies. It can also happen later on. There are two different types of jaundice. There's jaundice that happens at birth and there's jaundice that happens at other times. We're talking about children, unlike adults, where there are many different causes, like with gallstones and liver disease. A child that is jaundiced later on in life after not being jaundiced at birth can be due to a problem of an infection in the liver called hepatitis. Like you get tonsillitis, hepatitis means liver inflammation of the liver. And that's why it's so important to vaccinate your child. There are two vaccines that help protect your child against infectious yellow jaundice. Hepatitis A and hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is generally rolled out throughout the world. And by immunizing, we've literally eliminated liver cancer as a result of hepatitis B. But liver disease due to hepatitis A, which is infectious, can actually be fatal. And it's a vaccine that often is missed out. So please think about it and vaccinate your child at the age of a year against hepatitis A. But coming back to newborn children. So yellow jaundice is something that often happens in the newborn period. And there are three different types. There's jaundice that will happen within the first couple of days while you're in hospital with your baby at birth. If the jaundice happens in the first 24 hours, it's always abnormal. It's called pathological jaundice. It's something that may be due to a blood group problem, incompatibility, or an infection, and that's something that will always be picked up by your doctor at birth. Then there is a type of jaundice that is from about one day of age to two weeks, and it's called physiological jaundice, and can often happen in about 53% of all children. It can be down to the adjustment of a baby from being in the womb to out of the womb. A baby has a different type of hemoglobin. It's that chemical that clings onto oxygen to help it through the pregnancy because, of course, a baby's lungs are not being used. So a baby has to have very, very thick blood to cling on to more oxygen. You'll notice your baby at birth looks very red. So there's an adjustment, a thinning out process of the blood after birth because it's not efficient to pump very thick blood around now that the lungs are being used. So there's a process of baby blood being converted into adult blood from fetal to adult hemoglobin. And the pigment called hemoglobin, which carries the oxygen, is in the little red blood cells. And that process of thinning out the red blood cells leads to the removal of those red blood cells by the liver. And that process sometimes is active and it spills out, out of the liver and into the blood system and causes yellow jaundice. Now, yellow jaundice is something that can be dangerous. If it goes too high and it's not well controlled, it can actually cause brain damage in your baby. So that's why as doctors, we obsessed about jaundice. We watch every day, we monitor the color, we test for it. And of course, you know, with blood group issues, they're hardly a problem unless it's a very rare problem. So if that jaundice gets to a certain high level, it needs to be treated. And the most common way we treat it today is with light. Jaundice can only be excreted or got rid of by the liver and by the bowel. By putting a blue light on your baby, converts the jaundice in the skin to a form that is can be dissolved in water and of course be urinated out. So you're doubling the output. Putting your child in the sun is a very common thing that is advised, but it doesn't really make a big difference because you can't really leave your child in the sun long enough to have an effect because it's not good to leave your baby out for four hours in the midday sun. It's not possible. So things like feeding makes a big difference. If your baby's not being given enough fluids and fed properly, the jaundice goes up. Now, of course, that's the physiological jaundice and often settles down by about two weeks. There's also something called breastfeeding jaundice. There's an association with breastfed babies which have a more and an increased chance of having jaundice. They do not need to be stopped breastfeeding. That's one thing. So then if there's jaundice that lasts more than two weeks, it's called prolonged jaundice. Very important. It's called the yellow alert. 
If a baby has jaundice for more than two to three weeks, they're not premature, that needs to be tested because there's a very rare condition called biliary atresia, which happens one in 5,000 babies. So we often have to do jaundice checks on 4,999 to make sure they don't have this rare condition. And they often need a blood test if they still have jaundice at two to three weeks to eliminate that condition. Because unless it's recognized, dealt with early, it can lead to a blockage and missing the boat to help your baby. And, you know, over the years, I've seen several children in my practice who have needed liver transplants. So this is a very important thing. And of course, if your baby is very jaundiced, make sure that you feed, make sure that you follow up with your doctor, particularly the pediatrician, and as soon as you can. Jaundice makes a baby very sleepy. So if you're battling to feed and your baby's having to be woken up and being stimulated to wake up and feed and they're jaundiced, that's very important to have it checked early. That's why we asked parents to come back at one week to have a, a check. And then, of course, if the jaundice is kind of high and your baby's passing a very pale clay-like stool, that's not good because it means that there is a blockage in the tubes and that needs to be checked. So that's why, as, as pediatricians, we follow babies up early. And as parents, if you see, because you might not necessarily see that your baby's jaundiced. You see your baby every day. Often, well, your, your mum or your mother-in-law may come in and say, oh, you know, isn't that, you're sure, there's a little bit of jaundice? And remember, take that advice, have it checked. Jaundice can be a very serious problem. There are over 200 causes of jaundice, but these are the important ones to think about and have your child, because some of them are, pre are, are preventative, with vaccine, feeding, having it checked, and, of course, having a good antenatal and care by your obstetrician to avoid blood group issues. I hope that helps you give a better insight into what jaundice is.